point of this video is to inform you guys about ice fishing and like the differences and the lures of it. Uh, you know, a lot of people think that just because they don't have their, uh, really, I didn't have my hat on, uh, some people think that they just can't go fishing because there's like, uh, you know, they don't have a boat, and you know, that's, that's kind of what ice fishing fixed, is because now, even though you don't have a boat, you can still walk out on the ice, drill a hole, and catch fish, and I feel like that's one of the major advantages of ice fishing. You can do it with any age, all you have to do is walk out there and just drill your own hole, like you said, and you, all you have to do is just sit on a bucket or sit in your clam shell. I feel like the, the reason we made this video is just to, like, show people that just how how we fish and uh, like things that we do and uh, you know like stuff we use anything like that shacks anything and uh, technique everything this is what this video is going to cover so let's get to it no. okay well uh, I've been in the fishing business for about 30 years uh, about 15 of those years here in Spirit Lake with pure fishing in fishing, well, I've been, I've enjoyed fishing since I was a little kid. Uh, and that's part of the reason that I became a conservation officer was because I enjoyed hunting and fishing so much as a kid that it looked like a, a good career path for me. We had the old, uh, oh, they were like the kind of the bait caster style rods and reels, but we had the steel fishing rods, you know. I don't know if you've ever seen those. Oh, uh, I got one in the garage. <laughs> yeah, the old steel fishing rods. That's what I fished with every day off the dock while my dad was out in the boat guiding. Um, I I fished every day in the dock off the dock. And in fact, if all the guides in the resort were gone and there were still people that needed guides, I got to go with them because I knew where the fish were, you know. Yeah. Um, and I was doing that in third grade. In the area, it's always been uh, a great spot to fish. Uh, and probably one of the premier spots in the whole state uh, for a fisheries resource. That said, it certainly has changed over the years. I've seen a lot of, a lot of change in the 27 years that I've been here. Uh, and, you know, it's gone from different size boats. When I first started up here, the boats were probably 15, 16 foot, and you could even go out there on a, on a more or less a, a rowboat type thing and, and really do some fishing. Now that those days have, for the most part, passed. Uh, now they're, even the fishing boats are 20 to 23 foot fishing boats. So that certainly has changed. And you know, the, the it, it's a year round sport. And that's one of the neat things about fishing. And one of the neat things about fishing in this area is that, you know, the lake freezes, obviously. And because it freezes, it gives people access that maybe don't have the big boat to go out in on the summertime so they can get access to the lake and, and fishing during the wintertime through the ice. And that has changed a lot over the years. Have you noticed the number of like, ice fishermen from like, earlier when you started working in it? like now? Well certainly it has increased uh, and one of the things I think the reason for that is the uh, advent of the, the portable ice shack. Okay so with a Vexilar you are able to map out the fish on the screen and what it does is it shoots waves down like electronic waves down and it will map out like debris and everything with different colors and red would be strong like an orange would be medium and green would be light like light soft waves and so with the Vexilar you're able to see the fish and like the bottom of the lake like that when you go fishing? Markham's, I use Markham's when I'm ice fishing alright well uh, you know, technology is a lot more prevalent now than it was, although the, the actual techniques really haven't changed that much. I mean, hook and line, it's still the predominant way the fish are caught, 
and all that's got somewhat to do with legalities and the regulations. But beyond that, it, it's still one of the most effective methods. Certainly, there are huge advancements in depth finders and things of that nature uh, that will put the fisherman on the fish better. But the fisherman still has to get the fish to bite. You know, you can have the fanciest depth finder out there that uh, will tell you what the bottom's doing and that there are fish there, but that doesn't guarantee that you're going to be able to get the fish to bite. It's still the skill of the fisherman that, yeah. that gets that done. That brings another question. What do you think about like the cameras where they can see where the fish are underneath water and like all the new depth finders and stuff? What are your personal opinions about that? Well, I, you know, I think if it, if it makes... I don't think there's any impact on harvest by those things. It certainly gives people more enjoyment. I, I know some of the cameras, the guys go out there and it, even if they aren't biting, they can see them there. You know, especially when you do So this is an ultralight rod. You'll be using this rod a lot when you go pan fishing because when they just put it in the, the bait in their mouth, you'll just see the tip bend a little bit and you know that you have a fish. So you get ready to set the hook. And that is the reason why you would want to use the ultralight rod. So this is a medium action rod. By telling this, you'd use this for bigger fish like a walleye, maybe a pike, maybe a muskie, but that would be more of a smaller muskie. But as you can see, the tip doesn't bend as much. So it gives it a lot more backbone and stability for a bigger fish without letting your pole snap or bending as much. So the reason why you use ice cleats a lot is because when you're on the ice, you'll be slipping around and when you have a fish and you're moving spot to spot, you don't want to fall and maybe potentially hurt yourself or break your rods. So your ice cleats and they have like little almost cleats or screws sticking out to dig into the ice so you don't slip. So the reason why I like to use thin gloves is because, especially ones with fingers, so mitt ones are just impossible to even fish with. But, so the reason why you use thin gloves is when you have a fish and you're reeling off, you don't want to get your glove caught up or anything or in your line. And when you're trying to take off the fish, it makes it that much easier to grab the hook and pull it out or even bait the hook. Okay, so this is a scooper, and when you drill your hole with your auger, it will leave a bunch of ice and like slush in your hole, and you use these, and you just will go like that and drag it and scoop it out of the hole, so you have a clear hole, and when you try dropping your lure down it, it won't get stuck on the slush. So here are some jigs. This one is like almost a gemstone imprint. And then on the back it's silver and it's really small so that bluegill will bite it. And this is a diamond head jig and gold which is one of the best colors. So when you, you're using a diamond head jig, the sun will reflect off of it and make a better just reflection and the fish will notice it more. And there's that one. And here's a silver normal tungsten original. It's just a jig head that's all silver. And here's the gold version of the tungsten. And those are all fairly small ones with fairly small hooks. And now you have a bigger version of it, and it's all red. And it's another diamond head jig in red version with eyes. Since it's a lot bigger, they want to put a little bit more eyes in it. Okay, so this is a jig wrap. It is bluegill pattern, and in the bigger version, it's called the alpha jig wrap. And what you can do is it's an all-season one, so you can cast it or jig it. But we're talking about ice fishing, so since it has the two hooks on the sides, if the, the fish comes from one end, or if they just come from the bottom, there's a treble hook sitting on the bottom to get it. This is the all green perch color, which is also a lot smaller than the other one that we talked about. And it still has the same concept of the hooks and biting them from each side, but it's just a scaled down version and a lot smaller 
for smaller fish. Uh, and fish see in shades of gray. They don't see chartreuse, which is everybody's favorite color, or they don't see red. They see it as shades. So if you can find a way to differentiate those shades to the fish through a glow color, which absorbs light and then emits light under the water or in dark conditions, or UV, which is brighteners, which makes those contrasts in gray greater, you seem to have more success. Okay, so this is impulse baits. They have a really good scent that the fish like, and when they're making these scents, they put the scents on cotton balls, and they'd put it in these tanks with fish, and they'd see how long the fish would eat it, or I mean, hold it in their mouth. And one night they were trying doing the things and they had this one scent and when they did it, the fish had it in its mouth so long that they just counted it as eating it because it was in there for at least an hour. Okay. All right, so we're doing the comparison between live baits and fake baits. Live baits, obviously, they have the, they move by themselves, they'll give the more lively scent and that's what the fish are wanting. Or you can get the, fake baits which will last quite a bit longer and they have the artificial sense and like different shapes and stuff like this one this is a mayfly and fake bait. Right. well that? either have I use both and on different occasions things work better uh, if it, for example panfish uh, we use that ice fishing. A lot of people use like a little magnet, a maggot, uh, a Euro larvae type worm. That's really good for about one or two fish if it's in a live bait form. Whereas if you were to use a power bait product or an impulse product from Northland, that you could catch 50 fish on the same item. So uh, in that particular case, it works better. Um, if fish are aggressive, it seems like artificial is better than live. If fish are more passive and docile, which happens at certain times of the year or when cold fronts go through or things like that, live bait seems to work better. So I think each has a spot. Um, with live bait, you can't really change colors. Artificial, you can uh, live bait, you really can't change the action. It's whatever it's doing. With the uh, um, artificial lures or artificial bait, you can't change the action. Well, I got started in the ice fishing because I was a big, like, open water fisherman. And I always went out with my buddy KK. And basically, I just was in the mood to ice fish or mood to fish, so I was like, I called up KK, like, we should go ice fishing, and then that's how my ice fishing experience started. I haven't had much of an ice fishing experience, but the one that I have was pretty good. So I got into ice fishing because I used to fit, oh, I still do fish in the summer, and I didn't have anything really going on in the winter, and a lot of my friends were ice fishermen, and they still are. So I got into ice fishing because I got a auger for Christmas and so I started using that a lot and I still bucket fish right now. But I'm looking at a Vexlar and a shelter right now but we still currently don't have one. But sight fishing is still fun and a good thing to do in the winter time. So one of the main reasons I got into fishing was because I always I always went to Chamberlain, South Dakota with my dad and I, I really I really enjoyed going there with him and it's just always fish to be caught. And it was in 2010, I believe, when we started actually like hammering on fish. I mean, we were having so many fish caught, it was let down and you'd have them. It was never there was never a dull moment in that day that we were just like sitting back. It was always constantly just, boom, got one, got one. Like, we couldn't keep them off. And it, that's really what triggered it. And then another one was my dad used to go to Canada. And he told me when I, if I, when I get older and start learning how to fish more and keep going, 
that he'd allow me to go with him, and that's really what sparked it. And uh, I mean, I, I love fishing year round, but the reason that I do ice fishing is because I'm so used to having like everything like on the water. And the issue with that is there's just not enough time. And that you just, when you fish year round, you have to learn new things. And the new things that you learn are really important. Like uh, going from fishing all day in a boat on the lake to going on the ice. And ice fishing is way different than normal fishing. But in my opinion, it's easier because bass fishing, you really gotta like work for the fish, so.